think this is the right spot? I don't know. It's kind of creepy. You know I hate graveyards. Maybe we should get to work. We, I hear the boss is coming soon. We don't want him thinking we're slackers. But we are. No, get to work over there. I'll start over here. I've never been a grave robber before. What are we even looking for? I don't know. Just keep digging. Hey, maybe we'll find gold rings. Ooh, or a gold tooth. Or gold earrings. Hey, um, are you afraid of g g g ghosts? I don't know. Are you afraid of zombies? <laughs> grave robbers. Yes. Approach. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, sir. We've heard a lot about you. We're really big fans. So what do you want us to call you? Grim or just Reaper? Or how about Mr. Reaper or just Big G? Silence! Oh, he has a British accent. It's very villainous. Tell me, how much experience do you two have in stealing from the spirit realm? This is our first time. <sighs> This is a delicate matter. Why do they always send me the idiotic new recruits? <laughs> he called you an idiot. No, he called you an idiot. He called you an idiot. No, you're, you're an, an idiot. idiot. Quit bickering. Approach. <laughs> Behold, grave robbers, they arrive. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Reaper, sir, um, are those zombies? <laughs> are they going to eat our brains? Well, if they try to eat your brains, they're certainly going to starve, aren't they? No, they're not zombies. They're mere mortals. Human. Humans? They can see us. We better hide. Oh, don't you understand that they don't understand that we are here in a different dimension, imbeciles? Our greatest asset is that they don't believe that we're real. They think the devil is the stuff of myth, of legend, of folklore. Well, what are they doing? They are mourning their losses. Listen. My old man was a Desert Storm vet, a tough-as-nails Italian, but he couldn't survive this. Just the word cancer takes your breath away. It's like a death sentence. It was either me or him. Sometimes you have to make tough choices. We always wanted children, but then this... It's enough to crush you. Stress. Anyone can feel buried by the mounting pressure. You just never know when fear and doubt can put you over the edge. Wow, that's depressing. Exactly. You see, I've chosen the perfect cemetery. These are prime candidates. Oh, are they dead? Only half dead. Oh, oh, oh. Do we get to finish the job? <laughs> Well, if you're lucky, they'll take care of doing that to themselves. Oh, you're a smart man. Why are they so miserable? Well, thanks to our leader, the Prince of Darkness, <laughs> these mortals have been tripped up, derailed, and devastated by life's misfortunes. And you imps have been summoned for one purpose, to rob their graves. So we are getting gold earrings! And gold yes. nose rings! Yes. No, yes. no. We have no need of worldly treasures. Don't you understand? We're here to rob their souls of every last vestige of hope. We must convince them that they're alone, isolated, and that no higher power could possibly rescue them from their miserable, earthbound circumstances. The old man was a Desert Storm vet, a tough-as-nails Italian, but he suffered from PTSD. His mind was like a jigsaw puzzle. He didn't know how to cope, so he turned to the one thing that brought him peace, a bottle of booze. Dealing with his alcoholic rages was like walking on eggshells. And then one day when I was eight years old, he just up and walks out. I made a promise that day that I would never forgive him. So over the next 19 years, my anger has built this grave. We're planners. We like to map out our future down to the last detail. Have faith, dream big. That was our model when we got married 10 years ago. The plan was this. Start a thriving business in five years, check. Buy our first house, four bedrooms, check. Invest for retirement, check. And then start a family. But we couldn't. It's been heartbreaking. We spent thousands trying various medical options, but nothing worked. This was not part of the plan. If God loves us, then why can't we have children? So our dreams of starting a family have died here. 32 years ago, I was a miracle, a breast cancer survivor. At church, I was somewhat of a celebrity. People would point and go, that's the miracle lady. Until about a year ago, I got a phone call that said, um, 
Miss Jenkins, we had the result of your test. The doctor needs to speak to you right away. The terror came back, cancer again. Oh my, you know what I found out? I am a wishy-washy Christian. When things are going well, oh yeah, I'm there shouting hallelujah. But when there's a struggle, it's a pity party. Woe is me. Well, I'm mad at God. How could he let this happen? Disappointment is my tombstone. He was so charming, he swept me right off my feet. It was a whirlwind romance. I mean, we were perfect together. I felt like Anna, you know from the movie Frozen? Love is an open door. He even proposed on our fourth date, and I said yes. I mean, he had all the things I was looking for and missing. Security, companionship, romance. But on the night before our wedding, I panicked. I, I didn't know if I was ready for this, so I canceled the ceremony. Was I putting my significance in what a man could provide me? Or maybe my insecurities killed my dreams of ever finding a husband or having a family. I was raised in church. At times it was cool, but honestly, it felt like just a bunch of morality rules and judgmental people that frowned at you for violating those rules. So at 19, I moved out on my own. Finally, freedom. There's excitement and freedom, but there's also a lot of fear. I just want to find my own way, you know? But how do you know the right path? I was taught that Jesus is the way, but now I have major doubt. I guess my faith has died. Being a single mom is tough, and finances are always tight. But one day, my answer came in the mail. Pre-approved Capital One credit card. This was my ticket. So for years, little by little, I kept putting purchases on that plastic magic card. I knew I'd have to pay it off someday, but that was the problem. I kept putting off someday. Before I knew it, I was buried in $12,000 of debt. You see, these pathetic individuals are primed to self-destruct. They carry around with them the death of dreams of hopes, of plans, why they even carry those setbacks with them right here in the church. For it forbids them from prayer, from worship, from giving thanks. Look at how many there are. This whole place is a graveyard. Mm. What are we supposed to do? Wait, I've got an idea. No, 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 no. You simply need to sling your fiery darts. Um, excuse me? I only have a shovel. Oh, brother, don't they teach you anything? All right, fiery darts. It's when you sling accusations and lies at them so that they believe that their dilemma is too big for God to intervene. Go ahead, try one. You want us to sling a, a fairy dart? Fiery dart. Out of the way. All right, an accusation, okay. a lie. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, your mama is so dumb, she got hit by a parked car. <laughs> No. So yes. No. Yes. No, Mama Joe. It was amazing. Listen, you need to shoot them right at the heart of their pain, like this. Your father never loved you, and you're the reason that he left home. Oh, that's harsh. Exactly. Now you. And remember, if you tell them often enough, eventually they'll believe it. You deserve to be alone. No man could ever love you. You'll be a slave to your lender forever. You can't be trusted with children. There's no cure for cancer. God doesn't exist. He's a fairy tale. <laughs> ah, very good. Very good. You see, you are robbing them of their hope. And if you win the battle of the mind, you've won the battle of the soul. <laughs> now just watch as they crumble. <laughs> I could wallow in my situation. But today is resurrection day. The day I put my faith to the test. If I really believe that God is real, and Jesus has the power to raise dead things, then why am I waiting to trust him? Uh, sir, they seem to be getting stronger. <laughs> the fiery darts aren't working. Well, what should we do? All right, I wasn't prepared that they'd be armed with the promises of God. It looks like the dead are finding new life. Abort mission, abort <laughs> mission. <laughs> Forgiving my old man seemed like an impossibility. But like it says in Matthew 6, if you forgive others, then your heavenly Father will forgive you also. So we let go of our plans to find that God has a better one. Soon we will be parents to two wonderful adopted children. Now I'm doing something radical, trusting God with my finances. 
Philippians 4 says he will supply my every need. I'm learning to let God rewrite my identity and be transformed by the renewing of my mind. I remember from Sunday school, Jesus said, seek and you shall find. So I'll keep seeking. And although I still pray for my healing, Romans 5 tells us we can endure in our sufferings and it produces hope and hope does not disappoint. Dying in my ways, my bones were dry, my heart was caged. But when you touched me, I was saved. I've been stolen from the 